Hey, Greg Cunningham with Honest Charlie Garage here again, uh, proceeding with the 51 Ford that we're building for Street Rider, uh, the Road Tour car. Uh, so we're building it for that purpose, as, as you might remember. The, uh, the task at hand is chopping the top. Uh, this is a really fun part of a project because there's a lot of mystique to chopping a top. Uh, people have been doing it for years, uh, but it, it's always intriguing to see the different ways that you can go about doing it. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, that's what we're about to start on. Uh, so we've done all the planning here. Uh, Richard and Delton are going to be doing most of the, the hands-on work, uh, but as a group, uh, we've brainstormed about where should we cut it, uh, you know, how much do we want to take out. We've decided uh, to come two inches down in the front, three in the back. Uh, that's going to give us this nice little tapered look, uh, more of a teardrop shape than what it has now. And if we decide that that's not enough of a chop, we can always go more. Uh, but we're not going to cut too much right off the bat. Uh, we're going to take it a little piece at a time. Uh, something else that's going to help us get that teardrop look is taking this whole window assembly out as a, as a hole and moving it forward to remove a lot of the length of the roof and then leaning it down. Uh, that's going to give us a, a more of a streamlined profile, uh, make it look more modern and and uh, lightweight in the rear. Uh, we've removed a lot of the kind of the mass of this car by doing the, the nose on the hood and, and lowering it as low as it is so the roof is just kind of out of place now. Uh, so we're gonna, uh, uh, gonna do kind of a basic chop. I mean, there's nothing uh, that hadn't been done before, uh, but it's always, always fun to do it yourself. Uh, so and now that all the uh, measuring and, and marking has been done, uh, we're gonna gonna get to cutting on it. So what we've done, how we came to our marks, we wanted to pick the straightest point on each one of these pillars, make it a lot easier when we start setting the top back down to get everything lined back up. So that's where we made our critical marks and took a saw and now that we have the top lifted off, we're ready to make our second cuts on our pillars. And hopefully this uh, the rear package tray in the window, we're gonna have to slide it forward a little bit but we won't really know exactly where we want to place that till we get the roof set back down uh, and get the height we're looking for. When it came to the, the rear window, we had the idea that like, we did not want to cut on our window opening. You know, just make it a pain when you go with your glass later on in the project. So what we did, we, we laid us out a three quarter inch line away from our seam. Because when we go to adding our filler piece in here, we didn't want to have to be welding right there. And that, that's a hard place to grind. So you never really, if you can get away with it, want to cut it right on your seam. You want to go one way or another. So we came out here on the flat and left ourselves a three quarter inch flange on our rear window. So you can see we cut this loose. And now we're folding the rear window down to get it right in the right plane. And so we got the window loose. We've tucked it up underneath the top. And we want to get a nice little contour as it just flows right on back to the, to the rear. And then that's where we're sizing up right now. And then later on, we're going to have to come in here and add our little filler piece, which that'll be handy that we left our three quarter inch flange. We had our uh, rear window.
Linda, I'm gonna call it a package just for lack of a better term, rested up underneath our, our roof panel. So once we finally got happy with the way it flowed out, we just clamped it or cut it. We actually used Clecos and uh, got it cut down. And you can see our little clamps here from Eastwood make it really ha handy. Gives you your gap that you'd want to have before you TIG weld. And uh, got it cl clamped into place where we were happy with it. And uh, still going to require a little bit more work here on our flange to get everything to plane out nice and smooth. So that's basically where we're at right now, getting our bottom line back up. And uh, too bad Dennis Carpenter didn't sell this piece. <laughs> Way to go, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was amazing how everything just came together with, uh, as you can tell, we haven't had to really cut the roof a whole lot, just a few uh, simple cuts and uh, just relocation of some pillars. And uh, as you can tell, we've done away with the, with the uh, tail lights and the little bulbs that Ford came with from the factory. So what we're also going to want to take away our little seam, seam trim here. And we'll just grind that down and hopefully we're going to lead that back in in the near future. But while we're fitting the rear of the top, I, I, I figure it's going to be a lot easier to go ahead and at least get us about six inches of it out of the way. So we'll know exactly where, you know, where we're coming to with our roof panel. Make sure we get it exactly where we want it. When it comes to the package tray, now that we have everything in line and right where we want it, we're just going to come through here with a cutoff wheel, cut the excess off that's hanging underneath and just butt weld those across through there. And really, it will look like it's untouched by the time we get finished with it. And that, you know, that's one good thing you want to look for when you're uh, doing metal work or something heavy to the car. We tend to be traditional, so we want to keep the appearance uh, as stock as much as possible. So just little tricks like that without, you know, we butchered it, but you really won't be able to tell we butchered it. template made and our metal cut out. Uh, see it kind of tweaked a little bit as we were cutting it. We'll get it worked out. Then we're going to hand it off to Paul and he's going to have his way with the English wheel. And she'll get the crown put in it that we need to match the profile of the car. Well, spotting in our filler piece. Um, We've got these killer Eastwood plants we used on this too. Uh, and uh, just tacking a little bit, and making sure all the panels line up perfectly even, even so it doesn't bite us later on down the road. Well, it took us a couple of templates, <laughs> a couple of tries. We didn't hit it on the first time, but the second time we got right on the money. So yeah, actually it didn't really take a whole lot of fabricating to make it. So I think we're making great progress to be honest with you. I mean, everything's falling right into place. We're blessed. <laughs> <laughs>
guess for a lot of do-it-yourselfers or somebody who's wanting to attempt a chop top, the first critical thing you have to know is how you make, where do you start to make your marks. And as far as this, we knew we wanted to bring it down about two inches in the front, about three in the rear. So we wanted to get the straightest portion of the winch, the A-pillar, the windshield pillar. Uh, that's going to be the best place to make your cut. And see, we didn't take two inches out as far as just like straight down the piece of metal. We took into account straight down, because if you had laid out two inches, you would actually be chopping that about two and a half. So you just kind of figure, kind of like a pitch on a roof. You want to bring it down two inches straight, which you might only really be cutting out about an inch and three quarters of your pillar. So that's how we came to that mark. And as far as like back here, we took the two inches because that would be coming straight down. And uh, so it kind of, it worked out perfect dead on the money. As you can tell, we had, haven't had to do a whole lot of cutting on the roof. Everything's worked out great so far. Um, and when we got the top set back down on here, we were about a half inch wider at our post as we were the top. So how we compensated for that, we came in, gave a little simple pie cut on both sides, brought them in a quarter inch on each side, and it's just lined up beautiful. So uh, yeah, we knew we were dead on the money right here. And then as you come back here, as we as the top came forward, our posts, our B posts were a little off. So in order, how we did that, we came up, got our measurement of how far of an offset we had, which ended up to be an inch and a quarter. So we came back here on the rear window, cut us out an inch, an inch and a quarter gap along with this, and you can see we just swapped places. We slid this piece back and put our inch and a quarter space gap, uh, piece back in back in the gap which lined our B-pillar back up perfectly straight. Did that on both sides, and uh, so far, so good. The main reason why we wanted to take this piece out uh, independently versus leaving it on the rest of the top, because we're gonna be able to put this piece, we'll get all of our lines to line back up, and it still look like a factory window. You want that smooth little transition. So once we get this piece trimmed down to fit, it's just gonna look like a factory window. Richard and Delton have worked on this roof now for about a day and a half. They had a, a half a day of planning, uh, which is crucial when you're doing a project like this. There's a lot of measurements and, and uh, uh, marks that you need to make on the metal before you cut anything. Uh, so we're actually looking at about a day and a half of progress, which I think is really good. You know, I went, uh, went into the, the office and, and came back just a little bit later and I mean, it looked like they were almost done in just you know, half a day's worth of work. But in reality, they're probably about a third of the way done uh, at that time. There's a lot of details that, that they've been working on. Uh, I'd like to have Delton in here, but I think he's a little bit of camera shy, maybe. So Richard's gonna, gonna speak for him. Um, but you know, what, what you're looking at here, most of the, the sizing up on the roof is done. Uh, he's working out some details and, and has the doors and, uh, and rear windows yet to go. But uh, I'm thoroughly impressed with what I've seen so far. So Richard, tell me, how impressed are you with yourself? I tell you what, it, it's, uh, it's came together, yeah, a lot better than what I initially thought. Uh, like we said, we wanted to go with a nice sleek look, so we, we stayed at two inches in the front. And uh, we're gonna come somewhere around, when, you know, when we first thought about it, come around three inches. But we actually decided to drop the back a little bit further down, just to give it more of a teardrop, tail dragger look, and uh, I think it's really paid off. I mean. Uh, Everything's going great. Uh, we're putting in the filler piece now to where just in time, Eastwood sent our uh, butt weld clamps and uh, we got them out of the box and put them to use right away. And uh, makes it a lot easier filling, putting in your filler piece. Um, yeah, I mean, everything down to your package tray in the rear, everything's working out like you would think it was stamped up in Detroit. So, something that they've done uh, that Richard hadn't mentioned is 
left the angle of the windshield uh, the same. It's going to be an easier glass to, to manage because it's flat. Uh, but they've accomplished two things with the rear window. Uh, moved it forward and laid it down to give it a, narrow, a shorter roof and more of a streamlined look. But they also kept the original opening for the, for the window, so our glass guy doesn't have to worry about doing anything custom there. It can be a direct installation. Richard and Delton have worked really hard for a week to finish this chop on the uh, on the roof here. A week is actually pretty fast. Uh, I expected it to take longer, so I'm really excited about how well they did and how quickly they, they did it. Uh, I think that's basically due to their planning involved. Uh, you can see that on this chop there's still 20 feet worth of, of welding to do, which is, which is a whole lot of, of uh, uh, beads to, to lay out, but that's less than they could have had. So they, they planned ahead and, and uh, laid it out to where they're able to move the post rather than section the whole roof. You know, you come back to the back, they lay the window down to bring it forward so they don't have to add material to go back to the window. You know, it's little stuff like that that can add up to days worth of work. Window frames a lot of times are a very complicated part of a, of a top modification. Uh, but Richard and Delton got through this one relatively easy with that planning I was talking about. They did one little chop here, so we got two welds. They, uh, they welded in this corner piece, had to do a little pie cut, uh, metal finished it, made it look as easy as that. But it's really not. It's a, it's a hard project. You can see uh, you know, half a dozen pieces of metal back here. But on camera, it probably looks like one solid piece of metal. It's probably one of the finest chops I've ever seen. So when you stand back and you see uh, how dramatic this, this has changed in, in only one week, it's pretty impressive. You know, it's got this the style that is modern. It's what we're into. We didn't chop it real crazy, like four or five inches. You know, that's kind of the 90s look. Uh, what we have here is, is tasteful, uh, adds a little bit of luxury to the, to the streamlined look by going uh, four in the back, two in the front. I guess it's about three and a half in the back. But uh, uh, really, I'm thoroughly impressed. You know, the guys just, just finished DA in it. So it's nice and shiny metal again. And uh, check this off the list. It's time to move on to the driveline.